Welcome to American Dog Culture. We're searching the country to bring you stories from dog owners, trainers, and industry professionals. This week, we're in Fort Worth, Texas, checking out the Fort Worth Kennel Club's All Breed Dog Show. The Fort Worth Kennel Club has been around since 1920. Today, we visit with Denise Tatro, who's the show chairman, and tells us more about the dog show. Today we're at the Fort Worth Kennel Club in Fort Worth, Texas with Denise. Yes. Now, the Fort Worth Kennel Club has been around since 1920. Yes, they have. So you guys have an amazing history. We do. Um, if anybody is very familiar with the city of Fort Worth, we are the oldest event other than the stock show. Wow. And so that's kind of amazing. And we've always been in this facility here at Will Rogers. Wow. So you probably have some amazing stories over the years. Through the years, we have, I mean, well, a lot of changes. Um, a lot of breeds have come in, you know, when we first started there were 50, we're now at 100, almost 171. Wow. So um, the breeds have certainly changed, the atmosphere have changed, a lot of the rules, you know, and things have changed. Many events have been added, whereas it used to just be confirmation, which is where you are now, where they're judged by a standard. The judge is looking at a book, they have the standard of that breed. But we now do agility, which is you've seen on TV, where the dogs are doing the obstacles, uh, the dogs lure course, um, the sidehounds run what they is a simulated bunny running in a field. They run in packs of three. So we like to what we laughingly refer to as a balanced dog. Titles on both ends, champion on the front, all their performance titles on the back, and that's what makes it a well-rounded dog getting them to be able to do what they're bred to do. Yeah, and all of these dogs are bred to do something. That's amazing. And you have over 170 breeds here today. <laughs> yes, we do. How far are people coming? Uh, they come all the way from Alaska. Wow. wow that's amazing. Yep. Uh, we have one of the largest dog shows in the state of Texas. Um, due to the economy, a lot of the shows, you know, our numbers are going down from, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, but expenses, you know, economy, everything has changed. So everybody has to kind of pick and choose. Uh, we have over 2,000 entries here, which is amazing in this day and time. Yeah, and today we're, we're watching the All Breeds Dog Show. Yes. So when a spectator comes in, they're new to the dog show world, what is happening? Well, usually they're here to see their favorite breed. Right. And there's a schedule at the door that'll tell them, you know, what ring they go to. And like the dogs behind me are Salukis. And so if they came to watch Salukis, they would be sitting here watching that. Um, most of them all come basically just to see what they've seen at Westminster. They've all watched Westminster on TV and they come here and a lot of the dogs from Westminster are here. Now, we hear the term AKC. American Kennel Club. What does that mean? That means that all of these dogs are registered with that kennel club and we as breeders strive to make a better dog always. We are, temperament is always the first, health, and then we're breeding to a standard. Um, all AKC breeds, you know when you buy from a breeder, you're getting a well, a healthy dog. Parents have been health tested, puppies have been health tested, so you know what you're getting. Um, you will find a lot of us have rescue groups where you know there was something happened to a family and we'll get a dog back into rescue and then we'll place that with a nice foster home. So that's always somebody, you know, there's always dogs available. But, um, you know, we like, we want to emphasize buying from a breeder is the way to go, not a puppy mill or a pet store. That's very good. Now, you guys have other events this year? We do. Uh, in August, at the other end at Water Arena, we have a huge agility trial for three days. So that's a lot of fun. And you know they can see all of the the AKC National Agility Championship was just on TV, so they can come see some of those dogs here in Fort Worth, Texas. That's great. Well, Denise, if someone wants to learn more about about what you guys are doing, where would they go? On our website, Fort Worth Kennel Club, all one word, dot com. Well, Denise, thank you so much for spending time. And with we are so, having so happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Eggers is one of the top AKC obedience judges and she's on the board of directors for the Fort Worth Kennel Club. Lynn shows us her Doberman named Princess Diana and she shows us a little bit about the dog shows. Let's check it out. So Lynn, who okay. do we have here today? This is Princess Diana. She is a breed champion. She has a register of merit, which means she's qualified in three aspects of performance. Um, she has her temperament test and also 
her obedience titles. So she that makes you a, a what we call a ROM, which is a register of merit. Wow. And this is her, and and uh, she's very attentive today. She loves being down here. She's actually over six years old, so she's not showing anymore. But she's just had a litter of puppies, so we had ten puppies that are four months old. So she's yeah. she's uh, back back doing her thing, which is which is jumping around. <laughs> come here, Dada. Come here. Yeah, she's Good. enjoying seeing somebody holding food out for her. Now, how long have you been in dog shows? Oh, I've been uh, showing dogs since 1961, which is uh, many, many years. I don't even want to go into it, but I've been uh, I've been showing dogs a long time. Have you been with the Fort Worth Dog Club? I've been with the Fort Worth Kennel Club for about 20 years. Yes, okay. yes, one of the older members. And so this weekend, what are you guys what are you guys doing this well, weekend? Well, we're actually since this is our show, we're really um, we're acting as hostess hosts and hostess for the people that come here. We're always really appreciative of the people who enter this show. Very proud of the fact that this show has been going on for a long time. And we draw a really nice crowd of people and participants, spectators, and dogs. Very, very good dogs from all over the country. Dog shows are really here to identify dogs uh, and what they can actually do. They're really a companion animal, but they're also, these are working dogs. These were started out to be performance animals and dogs that protected your home. So, and they're, each dog has its own feel that it's good at. And this particular dog is good at protection. I, you can see though, she's not vicious at all. She's, no. just, she's just doing her job, but she could be, she could protect if yeah. she needed to. She's which got a is, very intense look on her she's face. She's very intense, yes she is, she yeah. really is. So that's what we're here for is to, uh, I think to show the public what kind of animals we have. That they're not vicious, they're wonderful animals to have in your home as a pet, or if you choose to show, it's always nice to have one that will show. But basically, they're for your enjoyment. They're there to, to add beauty to our lives, I think, because of the way they are, because they, they are so wonderful as a companion for all ages, puppies, uh, for children, and what have you, so. That's very good. Well, Lynn, thank you so much oh, for spending welcome. time with us thank today. Thank you for having us, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, we'll take Diana and feed her now. You hear that? Thank you very <laughs> much, good girl. When we come back, we'll have more from the Fort Worth Kennel Club's 2015 All Breed Dog Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're at the Fort Worth Kennel Club's 2015 All Breed Dog Show. Now, let's check out some Bull Mastiffs. So today we're with Paula, and you work with Bull Mastiffs. Yes, I do. So tell us a little about the history of Bull Mastiffs. Uh, Bull Mastiffs were originally the gamekeeper's night dog. They are, uh, were bred in England to guard the estates and hunt poachers. Wow, they're, they're large dogs, they're really they're large, cute. They're large dogs, they're very powerful dogs. Wow, so what would be their specialty? Their specialty would be they run down the poacher, knock them to the ground, and hold them. Wow. They don't rip, do rip people apart, they don't bite people, they knock them down and hold them. It's almost like a guard dog. Mm -hmm. And say. they're guard dogs, uh-huh. Wow. So in homes, what are their, some of their temperaments in homes? In temperaments, they are family dogs. They love children, they're protective of their families, and in today, society today, they're not quite that dog that used to hunt the poachers. Mm. But today they're family dogs, obedience dogs, agility dogs, I do all that with my bull mastiffs. Wow, now Paula, how long have you been in the dog show world? Um, 25 years. Wow, so what are you doing this weekend? I am showing my dogs. Wow. And we're having a great time. We had a specialty yesterday and we're just we're just here enjoying our dogs and uh, having fun with them. One of the really important things about dog shows is we show off purebred dogs. We also show people how to socialize their dogs and all the different things you can do with your dog. They have all kinds of things here that, that we can teach and whenever you're, you're sitting at the crating area, people always come by and talk with us and we can show them our dogs and that's, that's why we're here. And we can help them with their dogs so that their dog is, becomes part of their family because that's the important part of all of this 
These dogs that you see here, they're all a part of somebody's family. Yeah, and I see a good sense of community here. Absolutely, so. absolutely. We love each other and we love our dogs. Well, Paula, thank you so much for spending time with oh, us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Great Danes have a good disposition, and they're often called a gentle giant. Crystal Hannah shows us her Great Dane named Seven that she handles. Great Danes were developed in Europe, and they were used in packs to hunt boar. So they were called boar hounds sometimes, um, and it's thought that this is why their ears were originally cropped, was to get them out of the way of the boar's tusks and teeth and the briars that they might go through to, you know, to trap or, you know, corner a wild boar. Yeah. So it was uh, used like a hound. And they're, what's their temperament like? I know they're very intimidating, but they're actually really gentle. Exactly. They look intimidating from people that don't know the breed or don't understand. Especially the blacks seem to be more intimidating to people, but they are really sweet. This dog lives with two small children. She loves them. She has drugged me across the room to get to children. She loves children. She's very sweet. She's very like cuddly and you know, but if something were to happen and she thought she needed to protect me or her owner, she would not even hesitate. But we don't need her to, so all the time she's very sweet. Wow, and I I think sometimes Great Danes don't know their size. They There's do not know so their size. So many times I see Great Danes try to curl up on the couch with you. Yes. Uh, she sleeps on the couch and she stuffs herself wherever she can fit. Uh, she'll get on your lap, you know. They don't understand that they're a very large dog and a lot of them outweigh their owners. So they don't, they just think, well, I can fit there. It, you seem to be okay with it. So that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> so, um, but really, they don't take up as much space as you would think. Crystal, if you're interested in getting a Great Dane, what would you tell somebody? I would tell someone to research the breed heavily. There's lots of information online. I would start with the Great Dane Club of America website and read up there about the temperaments, about what you should look for in a Great Dane when purchasing a Great Dane, about what you should look for in a breeder when you're going to buy from a breeder. Um, there's also a Great Dane Rescue um, that you can find through the Great Dane Club of America. Uh, we have a lot of dogs in rescue, unfortunately, because people get them as small puppies. They don't research the breed maybe well enough, and then they think, well, this dog is too big. I can't handle it. So uh, research, buy from a good breeder or go through rescue, and make sure that you train early and often so that they are a good, happy member of your family that's easy to live with. Crystal, thank you so much for spending time with us today. All right, thanks. Julianne, tell me a little bit about your dog today. So this is Charlie B. He is an old English sheepdog. He just turned four years old, but he can tell you how old, how old are you. That's right. Wow, He's that's four. amazing. He's four, and he is an actor model. And he's also a service dog for me, and he's been certified. Picked him out when he was three and a half weeks old, and I have leg problems and have difficulty going up and down stairs. And he, I can grab hold of him, and he'll pull me up. Charlie, wow. can, Charlie can say other things, though. He can say, uh, say peanut butter. Say it. That's right, peanut butter. Wow, I don't know that if you heard amazing. that. Can you say banana? Say banana. No, that's still peanut butter. Say banana. That's right, banana. Wow. <laughs> and so Charlie B can count. Yes, he can count. So give me some numbers to. He can go up to 17 so Let's far. Let's say five. Charlie, count five. That's right, five. Wow. Can you count seven? Count seven. That's right. Count that two. That is amazing. Okay, count four. That's right. Oh my gosh, how did you teach him that? He, uh, he's very chatty. He's got a loud mouth and it, it's driving me nuts. And so I do clicker training with him. And so one morning he did, wah, wah, and I clicked and I said, good too. And so that's what it started. And so I just started, he'd say something else. I'd go, good three. And he's just so smart. He catches on real quick. We have a, 
uh, thing we hope he's going to get this week, a commercial where he's got to bark at a car. And so we've been practicing on that. Thank you so much for spending time with well, us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate but it. But before yeah. we go, uh -huh. let's see some more tricks. Okay. So, Charlie, uh, let's see here. I'm going to have to... Can you spin? Spin around for me. Turn around. Now, I want you to count to... What are we in? Go to 10. Got it. Uh, 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 uh. Say, uh, I don't know. Can you say thank you? There you go. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank All you. right, thank you. So today we're with Joey, and Joey, your, your dogs are beautiful. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about them. Well, Gypsy is a nine-month-old female, and this was her first show today. She's an old English sheepdog, and uh, she did okay. You know, she had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And this is my other dog, Leo, and he's about a year and a half. So. so how long have you been showing? Actually, about a year. About a year. I'm fairly new to this. I've had sheepdogs for 33 years, and I love the breed, but I've just been able to start showing recently. You guys are over here working, and what does it take mm -hmm. to get dogs ready for the show? Well, it starts at home. You have to totally line brush them out, which means brush every inch of their body all the way down to their skin. And then you bathe them. Then you dry them and brush them again. And then you come to the show, and that's when you fluff them up <laughs> and get them put on the finishing touches. Wow, so what are their temperaments like? They're very sweet. They're very family-oriented dog. Um, they're inside, house pet. They're very loving. Um, they're guardians of their families. Um, just all around wonderful dogs. Very intuitive also. We have 16 sheep dogs, Old English sheep dogs that are entered. Yeah, and they break them down into puppy groups and you know, the males and females, you know, so it's all separated out. And then the winners of those groups go in together and then they win their bigger awards, so. Well, Joey, good luck this thank weekend. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for spending time with us. Sure. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. When we come back, we visit with Linda Conrad and learn about canine behavior. Welcome back. Linda Conrad has been working with canines for 36 years. Today, she's going to tell us about some of the more common canine behaviors. Today, we're with Linda Conrad, and you work with behavior. Yes. Dogs. Yes, I do. So tell me a little bit about your job. Well, I've done it for 36 years. I've actually been showing dogs since I was four years old. And I started training when I was 19. And I started basic behavior um, and obedience classes. Now, obedience is different than behavior because obedience, pretty much anybody can teach obedience. It's your sits, down, stays, okay? Behavioral training is the mannerism, um, it's what the dog is made of. What I do is I go into some, someone's home, I actually drive to them and work with them in their home, and I make sure that their dog starts behaving the way that they want to. They're gonna set rules in their house, and I'm not only gonna teach the dog, because only 20% is dog training. 80% is teaching the humans that own the dog. And that's, that's really important. It is very important because we have bad habits. Right. And what happens is if we let our dogs get away with certain habits or certain things that they do normally just out of instinct, it might not work in our household and we figure it as being incorrect. Mm -hmm. And so we have to fix that. And how we fix that is through the humans telling them that we don't do that in this household. Well, let's talk and about so, that for a second. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of things, you know, dogs are really cute. You know, there's a lot of things that we do that may not be the best thing to exactly. reinforce good behavior. Exactly. Can you talk a little bit about that? We have a tendency to love our dogs right. too much. We fuss on them too much. I get a lot of phone calls of my dog has anxiety. Dogs actually can't have that. They don't have the ability to have that emotion, um, and like separation anxiety. It's that they get into a habit. It's a learned habit. We fuss on them when we get home, and we fuss when we leave. And so they're waiting for that. It's just like when you walk through the door, and you, you know, your dog's all excited to see you, and they're all wiggly, except the minute we touch our dogs, we praise them for that behavior. So if they're jumping up on us and we go to push them down, 
we're actually praising them for being up, okay? So I teach all of that into, you have to set your dog's elevations and you have to know what they are. And then you teach your dog that indoors, it's at this elevation and you don't go over it. Outdoors, you can play with the ball, you can bark, whatever it is, you have to set the rules and then I go in and I help you do that. So, wow. yeah, it's, so it's it's a lot of fun and, and it's immediate. It happens immediately. And so the other big thing that dogs have a, a problem with is begging at the table. Right. And so that's another thing that a lot of people will want to feed and the I, dogs some Thanksgiving leftovers. Exactly. But. And it's, it's not a good idea. Their system is not like ours. And so you want to stick. There's all different ways to feed. Um, it, you know, and it all depends on what breed of dog it is because it can be very different. Um, but with feeding at the table, what I always tell people, two eyes. If you can't keep your two eyes on your dog, and they can get into something, or I've had people call me and say, my dog just chewed up my $3,000 couch. And my response to them is, where were you? Okay, some dogs aren't, can't roam the house. They will get in trouble. They'll either hurt themselves by getting something. I had a lady call me last week. The dog got into thyroid medication. They freaked out wow. on that. They didn't have to take her to the vet, but you know, it's things like that. So I always tell people, get a crate. Okay, teach your dog it's a good place. You know, dogs are denning. That's all instinct. They want that, you know, enclosure around them. Because you'll find dogs that lay next to the bed. You'll find dogs that lay next to the couch, under tables. That's all a denning thing. And so that's, crates are wonderful. And then they don't have to always be in there. You get on the phone, excuse yourself, put your dog in the crate, come back, take your phone call, eat your dinner, make dinner, whatever you want, and when you're done, let the dog out. So it's very, very simple that way. Now, Linda, you, you have some great dogs out here today. Yeah. Let's talk about them. The Aussies, I've been doing Aussies for about 40 years. Um, I originally started, of course, in obedience and agility, and I trained for all of those, which I still do. I set all the foundation work um, for agility, for, um, herding, um, any of that. I also work with all of the rescues. Um, I work with the Oski Rescue. I work with a lot of other breed rescues on helping them. I donate my time to one dog a month for the rescues that I do work with. And then the other ones, we all work together on doing it. But the Aussies, they're pretty much my breed. I've, like I said, I've been showing dogs since I was four. So I've had many breeds of dogs. My daughter also shows, she's in California and she's 22 and she shows all breeds. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, we love it, so we well love behaved. it. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm a trainer, my dogs can still get kind of, you know, rang bunches, but they are trained since they're little puppies. At about six to eight weeks, they're all trained to stand on the table and be very comfortable with it. So, wow. mm -hmm. and I do a lot of trainings at the shows. Like if handlers have dogs that are, you know, misbehaving, a lot of times owners don't realize that us as handlers, they want their dog shown and they bring the dog to the show and they hand the dog to the handler and they say, here, show my dog. They might not know how to walk on a leash. They might not be used to all of this ruckus that goes on yeah, and all the noise. Exactly. And they're very shy. So if the handlers, they're not trainers. Uh, you know, 99% of these handlers do not train. They don't have time to train. So they'll go, Linda, I need you. Come over and work with this dog. You know, fix this dog up. Sometimes I take it home for a couple of weeks, bring it back, they go back into the show ring and win. And it's just, it's, you know, pretty much everyone knows me around here. So they know if they have a situation, go find Linda. Yeah, <laughs> so. well, Linda Conrad, if people want to learn more about your services, mm -hmm. how can they contact you? Um, I have a website. It's Good Canine, spelled out C-A-N-I-N-E. Dot com, and then they can find me on Facebook at Good K9 plus under my name, and that's Conrad with a K. So if they're looking for me, Linda, thank you so okay, much for spending time with you. us. Thank you, I appreciate you. it. Well, that's it for this week's show. If you have a story or tip to share with us, please drop us a line on our website and be sure to like our Facebook page. We'll see you next time.